aren't GMOs helping us to feed the world? No, GMOs are not helping us to feed the world. Next question. Actually, let me, let me go more detailed into that. This is the lie that Monsanto dreamed up by their PR firm to try and create guilt among Europeans and Americans so that we would accept their faulty, dangerous, uh, unsafe technology because someday it might actually help feed the world. Well, first of all, GMOs do not increase yield. On average, it's the same or in some cases less. Um, and agroecology, uh, which was recommended by the hundreds of scientists that did the most comprehensive evaluation in terms of how to feed the world for the UN, the ISTAD report, said agroecology is the way forward. They dismissed GMOs as being essentially irrelevant to the question of how to feed the world. Whereas agroecology can double yields, GMOs basically have no measurable average increase in yield. Now, it's also true that increased yield was not the way to feed the world because we have more food per person than any time in human history. Enough food to feed 11 billion people, I'm told, and yet close to a billion people go to bed hungry or malnourished every night. So increasing production is not the silver bullet according to the experts. It's access, it's distribution. There's a lot of complex elements. And so to try and promote a silver bullet that's actually a faulty silver, a silver bullet, it doesn't actually increase yields, and it's dangerous, and it uh, creates a, a dependence on corporations by developing countries, and it wipes out biodiversity, and there's all th sorts of things that it, that's bad. But even simply to push it forward as the, as the technology to cure hunger takes money away from the real solutions. So Bill Gates was approached by the Rockefeller Foundation, a very big pro-GMO foundation, and he was convinced and insulated people around him or the Monsanto Yes Men, and now he's giving millions of dollars to the technology for Africa and ignoring technologies that actually work and going for technologies that fail time and again and then put people at risk when they, if they were to eat these products. So it actually works against feeding the hungry world. Are organic farmers able to protect their farms from being contaminated by GMO crops grown elsewhere? The nature of nature is abundance and sharing. And um, when you plant GM corn upwind and it blows during the time that the pollen is available, if your corn is downwind, you will get cross-pollinated. You'll get contaminated. Now, you can choose corn that, that tassels at a different time than the corn upwind. So it, it maybe there's no uh, fertilization, if that's the word, at the, at the time. You can choose to move your crop. You can have buffer zones. But there is the capacity to contaminate in the field, during transport, in storage. And so sometimes you'll find that there is a percentage, small percentage of GMO contamination. And the contamination is higher for corn than it is for soybeans because corn cross-pollinates and soybeans do not readily cross-pollinate, in a small distance perhaps. So we have a situation where even though organic is not a foolproof area, it's the better choice. Now, non-GMO project verification requires testing if there's at-risk ingredients to see if contamination has occurred and has a 0.9% threshold. Organic has no testing requirement, so, but it doesn't allow GMOs or Roundup or other toxic uh, chemicals. So I say organic is more important than non-GMO project verified because you avoid the GMOs and the chemicals, but the two together is the gold standard because then you have the testing from the non-GMO project requirements as well as all the prohibitions of organic. So non-GMO project verified plus organic on the same package, the gold standard. If you have to choose between one or the other, I say organic. And if you can't get organic, at least get non-GMO. Are there GMO studies that show that GMOs are safe? And if so, were these independent or industry studies? There's no research that can prove something is safe. There's no, and there's no research that has been available that proved that GMOs were safe. 
we have a whole body of evidence produced by the biotech companies that I call rigged research. They've got bad science down to a science. They use the wrong detection methods, the wrong statistics, they overcook samples, um, they ignore evidence and call it not biologically significant or not treatment related without any justification. They have an entire lexicon, they have an entire vocabulary and a way of, of corrupting science that has become the norm now. And I've spoken to real scientists who are like pulling their house out saying, this is not how science is done. And yet that's how the biotech science is done. In my book, Genetic Roulette, in part three, it's 41 pages, catching the industry red-handed, showing how they rig their research. And it is amazing, it is blatant, um, how they, I mean, sometimes it's how they rig the research and sometimes it's their completely ridiculous statements and assumptions. I'll give one example because I like it so much. They were submitting a corn to Australia and New Zealand that was genetically engineered to produce more lysine so they can feed it to pigs and so the pigs would have lysine built into the corn instead of just adding the supplement lysine into their feed. Oh good, we can ignore, you know, it's like fine, we can ignore giving them lysine if we have this corn and it's so necessary to feed the world. And it produced a protein that was found in soil. And they said, well, because the protein is found in soil and we eat soil residues in the food, it has a history of safe use in the food supply. So it should be just accepted as safe because We've been eating soil for years, for centuries. So Jack Heinemann, a, a scientist and professor in New Zealand, called their bluff and figured out, looked up what the average corn consumption was for a, a U.S. male, adult, and figured out if that corn were the high lysine corn that was being submitted, how much of that protein would be consumed per day. And then he figured out how much of that protein is found in soil and how much soil that same average male adult would have to consume per day in order to have an equivalent dose. And it was 22,000 pounds of soil per second. <laughs> You'd have to be consuming 22,000 pounds of soil per second every second of the day to get the same amount of protein that you would if you ate Monsanto's corn on an average corn consuming day. I mean, I love that in that example because it's so absurd. And yet these are the kind of arguments and it is ridiculous how well they fly in the regulatory agencies that are largely staffed with the biotech appointments. And I've talked to them and some of them are really not very aware of the situation. I don't. I, I won't call them unintelligent, but they're certainly ignorant. And I, I remember talking to one of the top scientists in the world, Dr. P. M. Bhargava, who was asked by the Indian Supreme Court to sit on the approval committee and see if, in fact, it was a facade. According to a citizen's petition, that's what was claimed. And after 10 months, he said, yes, it's a facade. And he told me, we did a press, con press conference in Delhi, he said, it's every single submission any, any evidence of problems, they would say it's discredited. No matter what, what journal it was put in, no matter who did it, they just said it's discredited. And when he came out with his report and sent it to the Supreme Court and sent it to the Health Ministry and the, and the Prime Minister, the same committee tried to discredit him and said, he has no, no research in DNA and RNA. He actually had more DNA and RNA research than the entire committee put together. Um, and he, you know, it was a ridiculous thing. He laughed about how he was being treated by these people who he had caught red-handed lying and covering up and ignoring the evidence.